Yo, 2.2 pull plan. Let's do it. There's a lot of good units, and this is a great patch for Fua, hunts, and units that rely on breaking. There's chapters to the video, so you can skip around and see my insights for each character that's coming out. But I recommend watching until the end of the video to get a full view of the state of the game. Robin is a physical harmony character that buffs her entire team. Her best application is with dual carry comps, much like Ruin Mei. The main difference between them is that Robin boosts crit, so she fits into comps like Ratio Topaz. I think that she's a very strong unit, especially for zero cycling, but anyone who gets her should speed tune to be able to maximize her ultimate. It advances her entire party's turn. Get ready to make her one speed lower than your two DPSs, so that it effectively gives them an extra turn. She's high maintenance, and her team requires a bit of investment, but she has a ton of payoff. Honestly, I'm tempted to pull for her just to hear her songs mid-battle. It's a good use of diegetic music, even if you can just look up her songs and play them on your own. It's still nice to hear it cut in. Alongside Robin is Topaz's rerun. She's a fire hunt character that combos all follow-up attacks. Since the apocalyptic shadow game mode is coming soon, her single target damage will be sure to blast through any fire weak enemies. I've a guide on her in this channel, but the team comp section's a little outdated. The build's still the same though, but I will upload a premium FUA comp guide soon. I talk about game mechanics and make guides on this channel frequently, so if that's your vibe, hit subscribe. If not, then I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. The four stars for this banner are March, Hanya, and Xie Yi. I'd say Hanya's good as an F2P harmony for Topaz ratio. For the signature light cones, I think Robin's cone is great, and Topaz's cone is worth picking up if you're planning to use her with ratio, or if another unit is using your S5 Herta Hunt cone. The light cones for this banner are Swordplay, which is going to be a great light cone for the upcoming Apocalyptic Shadow game mode. Perfect Timing is a decent side grade for abundances and can help them proc Broken Kill's effect. And we have a new light cone called Boundless Choreo. It's a Nihility light cone and it increases the wearer's crit rate and then increases their crit damage against enemies that are death shredded or slowed. This is a great F2P light cone for units like Walt and Acheron. I feel like this cone should have come one patch earlier though. For the second phase, we have Bootil. He's a physical hunt character that focuses on breaks. And guess what? He has a physical weakness implant on his ultimate. This means that you could potentially brute force any content with him with enough investment. Two hunt characters in one patch, you best believe they're shilling that apocalyptic shadow mode hard. I hear people saying that Silverwolf will be useless after Boot Hill's release, but I actually think that this will allow players to run Boot Hill first half and Silverwolf second half, and you can brute force any MOC without even having to worry about matching weaknesses. Fushuan's been a solid sustainer ever since her release, and her value hasn't gone down since. She's a quantum preservation that reduces the damage her whole team takes and then redirects it to herself. And whenever she goes below half HP, she heals her whole HP bar back. In most time-gated late game content, she's essentially immortal. If you don't have a 5-star sustainer, she's a great pickup. The 4 stars for this banner are Pela, Luca, and Hook. Pela's a great support that needs no introduction. Luca might gain some relevance in this potential break meta, and Hook is still a good fire hyper carry in the game due to a lack of competition. For the signature light cones, I think Boot Hill is a great pickup to boost his damage if someone else is using the Herta Hunt cone. I think Fushuan's cone is low impact and you can easily skip it. The 4 star cones this time around are Landau's choice, which is a good side grade for sustaining. Genius's Repose is a great erudition cone that's worthwhile for endgame content like Pure Fiction. And a Secret Vow can be a decent side grade for units like Blade and Jingleo. Now let's move on to the drip marketed characters. Firefly. She's a fire destruction character. I'd have to assume she's going to be focused on breaking, much like Boot Hill, since fire and physical both have the highest upfront break multiplier. And since she's a destruction character and clearly waifu bait, I'm sure that Hoyaverse will make her a solid character. I'm personally saving for her E2 S1. Jade is a quantum erudition built for dual carry comps. She has a follow-up attack and has synergy with other erudition units. 
to me, it seems like he's geared towards pure fiction, but we'll have to wait for more information for me to give a real analysis. Now, let's talk about the state of the game. Last time, I predicted that we were moving away from the hyper carry meta. Looks like I was right, and I also said that Hunt was in a pickle and it would take a new game mode to save them. Now, with all of these implanters, and since fire and physical have the highest break multipliers, I'd have to assume we're moving towards a break meta and continue in the path of non hyper carries taking the plate. I hope they rerun Ruin May soon, because I'm sure that a lot of people, myself included, regret not pulling for her. I have to say, MOC is getting harder and harder with each patch. It's not just a DPS check anymore. There's so many unit specific checks that it's hard to catch up for people who don't have a wide roster. Who are you going to pull for? Tell me your plans in the comments and I'll share more account specific advice. That's it for me. My name is Skype and I'll see you all in the next video. See ya!